So let me go ahead and minimize this so I can just go look at that email real quick, just so that it's recorded this announcement. So I had a few of the announcements. So one of the announcements is, is that the schedule changed. I had it there on the yellow um, note card, but then it's also outlined in that page where it talks about the timeline and the to-do list. Then the test for corrections assignment, I have made it available. It should be at the top of the unit five module. Make sure you read them before doing your corrections and then you read it again before you upload your file. Because there's important bits on how to do it and then bits on what to upload, right? So make sure you're looking at all of that information in the assignment. Um, and then the unit four tests, I did grade those. I gave the feedback. If you were in class, I handed it back to you. I think there's only one other person who I have not been able to hand it back to. Um, but everyone else that took it online, I went ahead and, and put it in their comment section. So they have a copy of their feedback in the comment section. Um, if you did the test three corrections, I did grade those and I did make my comments in the comment section. And I also put the solutions in the comment section for everyone. So even if you did not submit the test three corrections, but you're still curious about all the solutions for test three, go check the comments of that test three corrections assignment and you'll see the test solutions, okay? Um, and then the last one is just that the lecture for yesterday had been posted. Um, we only have like less than three weeks. We have today and then two more weeks, right, of classes. And then it's just your final. So we're down to the very, very end. So we just need to go at it at full throttle and we should be able to be successful. Okay. So today we're gonna finish with 10.1. We, we had one more example in this section. And let me see if I picked any problems from the homework. No, yes, I did. We had one more example. Then we have two practice problems, two practice problems, three practice problems. And then I wanted to go over number 20 in the homework, okay? Once we finish these problems, we can move on to 10.2, okay? So, did I delete a page? I think I got rid of my 10.2 page. Okay. Oh, no, it's back here. These back, front and back pages throw me off. Okay. So if I want to solve this system, we have not done one like this. The one that they gave us in the example two or example three was like this four by four, right? It was a huge one. It was this giant one that we were trying to like use to make sense and navigate through the problem, right? But now we're going to practice it on three by three. And then eventually we're going to get to the practice problems and we're going to practice on a two by two, okay? Which is the one you're gonna see a lot in your homework. But there every now and then there's ones with three variables. And your word problems that have to do with electrical engineering and circuits, those problems also have three by three, okay? So we will see some three by three. So I definitely wanted to practice with you a three by three, okay? So the first thing to do is to change it into its augmented matrix. And so if we remember how to do that, we're gonna have the coefficients over here in this part, and then we're gonna have the constants over here in this part, right? So for all of my Xs, my coefficients seem to be one, negative one, and two. For the Ys, negative two, three, and negative five. And then for the Zs, I have a three and a five, and what should go here if there's no Z? Zero. Zero. And so then my constants are gonna go over here. And so remember the goal, the goal is to get these diagonals first and then use those diagonal guys to turn the other peoples in that same column to zeros. And you have to work column by column by column, okay? So it's always the one where it needs to go first and then use it, use that row to change the other guys to zero. So my goal would be to turn this guy into a one. But we got really lucky because he's already a one, right? So then I wanna change this guy to a zero. And just for my own purposes, that's my notation. I like to put boxes around people I'm gonna to change to a one. And I like to put circles around people I'm gonna to change to a zero, okay? So it's, it just helps me to separate things, okay? Now, what do I need to add to this 
to get a zero there. Positive one, but this guy's already a positive one, right? So I'm just gonna take row one and add it to row two, but I want to replace row two because that's where I want the zero to be, right? Is in row two. So I'm gonna do the little math over here. I always like to do this. I know the computer sometimes will do it, but this, they do not write this step at all. But I like to write it just so that I can see where all the numbers are going, coming from. And it makes me make less mistakes, okay? So that's gonna be, my row one is gonna stay the same. And my row two is now gonna become the zero, one, three, and five. While I'm here, I can still work on the other one as well. I can work on this one. But what would I need to add to get a, um, what would I need to add to row three to get a zero here? Not zero, two plus zero is gonna give me two, negative two. So what we have to do is we have to multiply row one by a negative two. And because it's a one, I just multiply whatever it is I need, right? So whatever you need to get the zero, that's what you multiply that row by. And you have to choose row one because row one is the guy with the one in the right spot, right? So let's see, that's gonna give me my new row three. So negative two times row one is negative two, positive four, negative six, and negative 18. All of these guys times negative two. Then I'm gonna add row three underneath. So that will give me the zero. I'll have a negative one. I'll have a negative one and I'll have a negative one. So I'm gonna put all of these guys in here. Where the first column is completely finished, isn't it? Okay. Now I'm need, gonna need to change the next guy, but it has to go in a diagonal, right? So the goal would be to change this guy to a one, but we're lucky he's already a one, right? So let's go on and try to change this one to a zero. What needs to be added to it to get a zero? Positive two. So we're gonna do positive two times the row that has the one in it, and that's row two. And we'll add that to row one so we can get our new row one with the zero where it's supposed to go. So let's see, row two, all of these guys times two. That stays zero, we get two, six, and 10. And then row one goes right underneath. So when we add these together, we get one, zero, nine, and 19. So row one becomes one, zero, nine, and 19. Row two is already good. I don't need to do anything to that one. It has the one right where it's supposed to go, right? But I can do my work to get that one to turn to a, a zero. What needs to be added to it? A positive one. So then I don't need to multiply that by anything. I'm just gonna do row two plus row three but I'm trying to get the zero down here, right? So we need to replace that answer into row three. Let's see. Um, well, this one you probably could because they're already right there, right? So you probably could do it without having to do the side work. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus negative one. And three plus negative one. Five plus negative one, right? Now we can finally move on to the last column. And so the, you wanna get the one right here. The only way to get one is to multiply by the reciprocal of that number, okay? So in order to make that a one, I'm gonna to have to do one over two times row three. And since the bottom row is where I want the one, I'm gonna get a new row three, right? So all of these rows are gonna stay the same. And then I'm gonna get zero times one half is zero, zero times one half is zero, two times one half is that one, and four times one half is two, okay? You only need to rewrite the matrix anytime you're turning something into a one, and then that one step where you're turning the other two guys into a zero, right? 
that's when you need to do a new step. So like here, I didn't have to turn it to a one. So I didn't have to write a whole nother matrix, but I did write another matrix when I turned those guys to zeros. And then from here to here, I didn't need to write a whole nother matrix because this guy was already a one. I only rewrote the matrix when I made those guys zeros. But on this step, I did have to rewrite it to make it a one, okay? Now that I've got it a one, when I rewrite it again, it's to make those two guys zeros, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna do this one first. I could have done the nine first. I'm gonna have to do them both, right? One on each side anyway. So for that one, I need to add a what? A negative three. So I'm gonna do negative three times the one, row three, plus this row two, and that would give me a new row two, hopefully with the zero in the correct spot. So negative three times all of these th guys. Zero, zero, negative three, negative six, and then row two underneath. So when I do that, I get zero, one, zero, and negative one. Now I'm gonna also do the work to make that guy a zero. So in that case, I need a negative nine, right? So we're gonna do negative nine times row three, the row one. And that will give me my new row one. So all of these guys times negative nine. And then row one underneath. And when I combine, I get that. So then now my matrix becomes my new row one comes from these numbers. My new row two comes from these numbers. And then my row three is gonna stay the same. That one's not changing. It already changed, right? It's good now. Okay, and then once you go back to the equations, what is the top equation? What equals negative one? So I know that this line is an equal sign and I know these are my constants, but what does this represent? What does that represent? The X's, so I have one X, right? And no Y's and no Z's. What about the next line? What does that one represent? Just the Y, no X's and no Z's. And then the last row is just Z. So sometimes I like to write this at the top just to remind myself, this is the X's, the Y, the Z's, and the constants. I also do it up here when I do the matrix. I remember these are the X's, the Y's, the Z's, and the constants, okay? It's not part of the matrix, it's just my little symbols at the top, right? Okay, and then that's your solution. If they want it like this with all the individual boxes, you could type it in WebAssign like that. If WebAssign tells you to type it in a point, always make sure you go alphabetical order, X, Y, and then the Z, okay? Okay, so that one was not as long as I thought it was gonna be, that's good. I don't think any of them are as long as that one four by four problem we had <laughs> the other day. So now we're gonna do the practice problems. So this is going from the very beginning of the um, section. And at the very beginning of the section, I've mentioned to you that there's some problems that just want you to go back and forth, right? Between the matrix form and then the um, equation form. So here they give it to me in matrix form and they want me to, this one's just to determine the dimensions. So remember they use a different word than the word dimension in the section. They use this word, but I told you that all three of these words are the same, right? Whether I ask you about the size, the order, or the dimensions. What you have to do is you have to tell them the number of rows by the number of columns. So how many rows does this one have? It has two rows, but then how many columns does it have? Three. And that's it. Um, so there are some that are like that. There's quite a few. 
Um, then the next one says, write the augmented matrix, but do not solve or perform any row operations. So they just want you to put it in the matrix. So when I do that, I think your book doesn't do a bar. It does like little dots. <laughs> I do a bar, but they do little dots. It's the same thing. So that's going to be my equal sign. So what goes in the first column? Six. Mm -hmm. And then what down here? One. Mm -hmm. And what goes in the second column? One and negative one. Negative one and one. Good. And then the constants, those are obvious, right? Nine and six. Good. And that's it. That's all they want you to do when you're putting the augmented matrix. There is one, I think, on the final that tells you to do that. And it literally says, do not perform any, anything. Don't do anything to it. Just put it in the matrix and leave it alone. Okay. So now this one says, use the matrices to solve the system, if possible. Um, use the gosh jar data elimination. If not possible, then you'll enter impossible. If the system is dependent, express X and Y in terms of the parameter A. So I don't think that we've received one like this. And this one is not even the kind of problem. However, I did have one like that. But it was a different problem. I think it's going to come up later where you are going to get a problem where you have to do the A stuff. Oh, I think it's the problem I picked for the homework. Okay, so let's put this one first in a matrix because I want you to see what this means. Okay, I want you to see how that looks. So in the extra problem I picked, we are going to have to do that. For now, we just have negative 2, 6, and negative 16, 1, 2, and negative 7. Now there are two options here. I have to put a 1. I have to get a 1 in this spot where the negative 2 is at. Like that's my first step, right? But you have two ways to do it. You can multiply by the reciprocal of negative two, right? That's how I told you to change things into ones. But couldn't you also just swap the two rows and you'll get the one in the right spot, right? So I think that's what I'm gonna do because I don't have to compute anything. I'm just gonna do row one swap with row two. And I promise you the biggest mistakes you're gonna make is just copying it over and messing up the signs that it just happens. So the one is good, but now I need to change this to a zero. So I'm gonna have to do a positive two times row one and add it to that row two so that I can get my new row two. So let's see, two times all three of those entries. So two, four and negative 14. And then row two, I'm gonna place underneath. I get zero, I get 10 and I get negative 30. So the matrix will become one, two, negative seven, zero, 10 and negative 30. Who am I supposed to change next? Which number? The 10 to a one, good. So I'm gonna put a box around it. And to change things to a one, I can't flip it again, right? If I flip it again, this one's gonna go in the wrong spot, right? So we can't flip it again. We do have to do the reciprocal. So I'm gonna do one over 10 times row two to get my new row two. So if that guy's staying the same, zero times a 10th is still zero. 10 times a 10th is one and negative 30 times a 10th is negative three. Again, if you have to use the calculator to compute the stuff, it's okay. It's not a horrible thing if you need to type this in the calculator. Now the last step is to get that guy to a zero. So we have to use negative two times row two. And row two, because he's got the one that goes in that column, right? I'm gonna add row one and that will give me my new row one. So let's see, all the bottom guys times negative two, zero, negative two, and positive six. 
and then row one underneath. And I get zero, zero, and no, I don't get zero. What zero plus one? <laughs> one. And then these is negative one. So that becomes my new row one. And my row two will stay exactly as it was. And now I have it done, right? It's got the ones and everybody else's zeros. So we can put it back in its regular form. What is the top equation gonna tell me? X equals negative one. Mm -hmm. And what does the bottom one tell me? Y equals negative three. And so if they want it individual, great. If they want it in a point, just the X and then the Y, okay? So these are more like what you'll see more often. They're a little bit shorter than the three by threes or the four by fours. Um, but you do get the three by threes every now and then. So it is good to know how to do those as well. Okay, so it has these directions. Now this problem has the same directions. Okay, they want us to do the exact same thing. But if, from what I remember, this problem is going to require me to do this parameter stuff, okay? And so I wanted you to see what that looks like when it happens so that you're not like, what am I supposed to do when this happens, right? At least you'll have seen it before, okay? So the first thing is let's put it in its big matrix. So this one's gonna be three, three, 12 and 12, one, one, four and four, two, five, to 20 and 23, negative one, two, eight, and 11. Okay, what is weird about this one is that um, something weird is gonna happen as we go through it, but all I can tell you is that you need to Goss Jordan eliminate it as much as possible. So there will be a point where you cannot get the ones and the zeros, but you've got to keep going at it until it looks like that as much as possible, okay? What's gonna happen, I can tell you right now, is that one of those rows is gonna to turn to nothing but zeros, okay? And probably more than one. But when that happens, um, we've gotta just kick it to the bottom and then keep trying to do the rest of it, okay? So the first step is to get a one in this spot right here. Do you want to do that by swapping or do you want to do that by dividing all of these by three or multiplying them all by the reciprocal of three? Swapping? Okay. So I always write a note what I'm doing. So if I try to check my answer later and I'm like, it says, no, you're wrong. I at least know what I did and I can just make sure that I did it correctly. Okay, now that we've got the one, we're gonna use that one to start making all of these guys zeros, okay? And I can do, as long as I can fit it on here, I can do all the math and then just have to write one matrix over again, okay? Since this row is gonna get replaced and then that one and then that one, right? The only one that's gonna stay the same in the new thing is row one. So that that whole column can be completed with the one and then all the zeros, okay? So, what do I need to get the three to turn to a zero? I'm gonna need a negative three. And I have to use that row one because it's got the one in the right spot, plus row two. So that's going to be negative three, negative three, negative 12, and negative 12. Row two is going to be three, three, 12, and 12. And so then I get zero, 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 and zero, right? And this is my new row two. Now I'm gonna work on this one. I'm gonna need a negative two. So multiply that by row one, add row three. That'll give me my new row three. So negative two, negative two, negative eight, negative eight, and then row two, I'm sorry, row three underneath. So I get zero, 
3, 12, and I believe 15. I'm going to double check that one. Yes. Okay. So that's going to give me my new row three. So 0, 3, 12, and 15. Finally, I'm going to do this one, but I'm just going to, I don't need to multiply row one by anything. So I'm just going to add row four. And that'll give me my new row four. So I'm going to add these two together. One and negative one is zero. One and two is three. Four and eight is 12. Four and 11 is 15. Okay. Now, the first column is done, right? We're going to move on to the second column. But in the second column, who's supposed to turn into a one? The zero. And you can never, ever, ever, no matter how hard you try, you can never turn the zero into a one, okay? So I'm going to have to row swap with this. And what I suggest you do is kick that row all the way to the bottom, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do row two, swap it with row four so that those two can just switch, right? So this new matrix will look like this. This bottom row will go here the third row is gonna stay the same. And then this second row is gonna get kicked to the bottom. Okay, so now that it's switched, I have a three now, right? That I need to change to a one. That we can do. We're gonna do the reciprocal of three times this row. So give me my new row two. So row one is gonna stay the same. Row two is gonna become zero, one, four, and five. Row three is going to stay the same. And row four is going to stay the same. Remember, when you change something to a one, you do have to rewrite the matrix before you start turning guys into zeros. Okay, now I need to use this guy to change that to a zero and that to a zero. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to do negative one times row two plus row one to give me my new row one. I'm also gonna have to do negative three times row two plus row three to give me my new row three. Do you see why I did these? Okay, now we're just gonna do the mechanics, right? So all of these guys times a negative one. And then row one underneath, And then over here, negative three times all of these guys. And then row three underneath. I get zero, 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 zero. Okay, so let's rewrite it now. Row one, I have a new row one, it's this. I do not have a new row two, so row two is gonna stay the way it was. I do have a new row three and we didn't do anything to row four. So row four stays the same. Okay. That's as far as I can go because can you change this guy to a, um, can you change this one to a one? And that's what I have to do, right? I have to go a diagonal. So I would have to get this to a one, but since I can't, you can't use it to make that a zero. You can't do the next step that comes after, right? So this is stuck. I have tried, but this is the absolute furthest that I can go with this matrix, okay? So the bottom doesn't tell me anything. The bottom tells me zero equals zero. Well, I know that, right? <laughs> it tells us nothing for this problem. The third uh, equation is the same thing. Zero on the left side, zero on the right side. It does not help me give them an answer. This one though, is what kind of equation? There's no X's, right? But there's one Y and a positive four Z's equal to five. Do you see that? Where I got that from, right? This is the X's, the Y's, the Z's and the constants, right? Okay, and then the last one tells me that X by itself is negative one. 
So I do not have y equals this number and z equals this number like the other problems, okay? So what you do is you take, the, this one's good. I do have a number. Don't I have a number for x? This is the one that's weird. So what I've got to do is I'm going to take it and solve for one of those letters. Which one's the easier letter to solve for? The y, because I just have to kick the 4z over, right? So then this becomes y equals 5 minus that 4z, OK? And then what you do is the, the variable that's over here, the one that is not isolated, you say let z equal a, because that's what they told us in the instructions, right? It said put them all in terms of the parameter a, OK? So the one that is not isolated is the one that becomes the A. Then that means that Y can be written as 5 minus 4A, right? Because Z is now A. And then X is just negative 1, so you don't have really a choice for that. So when they give you your answer in point form, you have to plug in the X value, this expression in terms of A for the Y value, and then this expression in terms of A for the z value. And so this is what your answer looks like when that happens, okay? So if you do get a row with all zeros, you have infinitely many solutions, but now you know how to write them if you have one of these big ones, one of the big um, equations. Now, here's just a test to see if you remember. What if I don't get zero equals zero? What if maybe the bottom one says zero equals zero but the middle one here says zero equals seven. What's the answer? It is, the no solution will override the infinitely many solutions. Basically that bottom equation is the same as one of the others, but this equation that would have the seven is just throwing the whole system off, okay? And so then if you have zero equals another number, it's just no solution. Okay, so it can happen that you get three zeros here, but if that's not a zero, just stop. You don't even need to keep going. It's just already no solution, okay? Okay, so that was our big whammy for 10.1. Now we're gonna go with 10.2, and 10.2 is interesting. Okay, I'm trying to think of what is the point of 10.2. I know that determinants have a point. Once we get to 10.5, you'll see how you can solve those same giant equations, these crazy big things. There's another way to solve a matrix problem without having to do all of this, okay? There is another way. Um, because this is just a lot, right? <laughs> and it's real easy to like lose track of what you're doing and why you're doing it and all of that. So there is another way, but we have to learn how to take a determinant before we can get to that section, okay? Um, so that's why determinants are important. Now, operations with matrices, mat that's going to come in play when you get to your engineering classes. Because when you get to your engineering classes, there is another way to solve um, matrices, but you have to use what's called an inverse and multiplication, okay? And I think they give it to you in here, but I kind of just want to explain it already because it needs to be explained. <laughs> Why do I have to do this, right? Um, I know you know how to solve this. I don't know what number to put over there, but if I had something like this, I'll just put the letter B. I think they choose the letter B later. When you're solving an equation like that, how do you solve it? Just a regular equation. Divide by A, okay. Now, what if I told you instead of dividing by A, you multiply by the reciprocal of A? Is that the same thing? We learned from matrices, that's the same thing, right? If I wanna divide by two, I just multiply by one half, right? Now, here's another thing. If I write this in exponent form, isn't it a to the negative one exponent? Right, by definition, okay? This 
right here. This is the inverse, the multiple, I cannot say that word, multiplicative inverse of A. So this guy will undo that guy, which is why it disappears, right? But we already know from experience that whatever you do to one side, you're supposed to do to the other side, right? And so then you would end up with this value over here, okay? Now there's two things. I can do the same exact thing with matrices. Only little issue is with matrices, matrices are not commutative when it comes to multiplication. So in regular multiplication, you can do two times three and get six and three times two and get six, right? But with matrices, when you multiply this matrix times this matrix, it is not the same when you multiply it the other way around. It, I mean, it might miraculously, coincidentally, sometimes be the same, but it is never always the same like it is with these. I could put any two numbers in there and swap them and it'll still come out the same, right? But with matrices, you don't, you don't have that situation. So that's why when I rewrote this, I when I, if I'm gonna put one over A on the left side, I have to put one over A on the left side over there, okay? And then when I rewrote it, I just rewrote that one also. But you'll notice that the A is actually being, multi the A inverse is multiplied on the left, right? And that's what's super important. So you can have, um, some matrix times the x, the variable matrix, which we'll talk about the coefficient matrix and the variable matrix in a minute, and then get that constant matrix. So you're basically splitting up the augmented matrix into three different matrices, okay? Once you do that, you'll figure out that the x uh, matrix is actually just the inverse of a matrix times the co uh, constant matrix, okay? And so this is our ultimate goal, okay? But before I can get there, <laughs> I have to teach you two things before I can get there. One is how the heck do I multiply matrices? Cause I'm gonna have to multiply these things, right? And two, how do I find an inverse? Because I'm supposedly supposed to multiply it by an inverse, right? So there's two things that we need to learn in this section. Before we can get to that, we have to talk about the baby stuff, which is like adding and subtracting, okay? Um, so we have to talk about, there is no division of matrices. There's just not. They don't divide by matrices, they multiply by inverse matrices, okay? So let's go ahead and start at the very, very beginning and just talk about how do you know when two matrices are equal, okay? There's a bunch of words here, I'm not gonna... <laughs> go through all that. Two matrices are equal when their size is the same and every corresponding entry is the same. That's when two matrices are equal. When A equals B happens when they are the same size and every single guy is the same, right? They cannot be equivalent in any other way. If I've got two of these, one, two, three, four, if they're supposed to be equal, this one better be one, two, three, four, right? You can't throw a negative in there and expect them to be equal. They're not equal anymore, okay? So they just have to have the same size. Every corresponding entry has to be the same, okay? The next thing we can get into is the um, adding and subtracting. In order for you to add or subtract two matrices, they have to have the same size or the same order or the same dimension, okay? And all you do is add each of the corresponding entries, okay? So for an example, they have like three of them. These two guys, are they the same size? They are, this one's two by two and two by two, right? So they're just gonna take one plus one, which they've written there, and then there's the answer in that same spot, right? And they're gonna take two plus three, which they've written here, and then the result goes in that same spot. 
and then zero plus negative one, which they've written here. And the answer goes in that same spot. And then finally, I'm running out of shapes here, um, one plus two, and then the result. okay? You don't have to write this, but they're doing it to show you how they got numbers, okay? So that's pretty much all we gotta do for addition. It's nice, right? <laughs> a little bit of a break from the craziness we were doing just earlier. Are these guys the same size? They are, right? They're two rows by three columns, right? So they are the same. So zero plus zero is zero. One plus zero is one. Negative two plus zero is negative two. One and zero is one. Two and zero is two. Three and zero is three, right? Last one, are those guys the same size? Those are three rows, but only one column, right? So you just add those together, you get zero, add these together, zero, negative two and two, you get zero. So as long as they're the same size, you're just putting the corresponding guys together and then giving me the results, okay? Not too bad. Of course, they're always gonna throw the curve ball, right? So look at these. Are these two guys the same size? They're not. I mean, it's obvious when you look at them, right? But even if I wrote down the dimensions, this one's three rows and three columns. This one's three rows, but only two columns. So they're not the same size. So how do you do it? You can't. You literally just tell them it's undefined. There's no such thing. You can't add those two things together, okay? So if you do see some and it says to add them and they're not the same size, you just type in that word. Either web assignment will either ask you to type in the word undefined or it will ask you to type in the word impossible, okay? But whatever word it says, that's what you do when they're not the same size. Okay, there is scalar multiplication. That's different from matrix multiplication, okay? Scalar multiplication is when they just give you a number like five and they tell you to multiply that by your matrix, okay? All you have to do is multiply everybody by that number, okay? So if I tell you to do, if I tell you, do they have an example? Because I don't want to write one if they already got one. Nope, they do not. If I want to tell you to do, I don't know, five times, no, let me word this correctly. <laughs> so I'm going to say A equals one, two, three, and negative four. And then I want you to find 5a, okay? All I'm doing is multiplying all four of those entries by five. So it would be five, 10, 15, and negative 20, right? Okay, that's scalar multiplication. You just multiply everybody by that number, okay? Now, when you're doing subtraction, you don't actually subtract you, what you're doing is you're adding um, a scalar multiple of the B, okay? So you basically multiply all the Bs by negative ones, and then you add the two things together. So even subtracting, if subtracting is just addition, don't those have to be the same size too in order to subtract, right? You have to have the same size in order to add or subtract. Now, we know two things. We know how to add, slash, subtract, right? And we know how to multiply by a constant, right? So with that comes all of these properties. You do have commutative property when it comes to matrix addition. Because when you add the two numbers together, it really doesn't even matter how you add them, right? It's still going to be the same, okay? So we do have the community property. We do have the associative property like with regular numbers. We even have the associative property if we were multiplying by two different scalars. Basically, you can multiply the scalars together and then multiply everybody in the matrix, or you can multiply everybody in the matrix by one scalar first if you want to do things a long way, and then multiply the other scalar in later, right? I would prefer to do it this way, just so that I'm multiplying everybody once, right? It's just choice. Always remember that you do have a scalar identity of one, um, I don't think we use that fact, but it's there. Um, what else? We have a distributive property. So if it's telling you to add two matrices together and then multiply by a scalar, you can distribute that scalar to both and then add them later. Okay. 
And then the last one is um, distributed property again, but let's say they're asking you to add two scalars together first and then multiply it by the matrix. I prefer to do this, but they're just saying you could multiply that first, multiply that first and then add it together. I always do the scalar computations first <laughs> and then just go multiply that one thing by the whole matrix. I don't deal with matrices as less as possible. Okay, now let's see. Oh, here, this is important. So it says one important property of addition of real numbers is that the number zero is the additive identity. So we know for real numbers, if you take any real number and you add zero to it, doesn't it stay the same real number? Well, there is something like that for matrices. It's called the zero matrix. And so if you take a matrix, whatever its size is, it's telling you it's this random size, and you add the zero matrix of the same size, okay? Notice it has the same size. That means that this matrix is just got a bunch of zeros in it. I don't know how many, because I don't know what M and N are, but it just has a bunch of zeros. So what happens if you take all of these guys and you just add zeros? Isn't it gonna be the same guy, right? So that's just letting you know that, that that's there, it exists. <laughs> um, and so make sure you're aware that the zero matrix can be any dimension, okay? When I say zero matrix, it's very general. And whatever you're doing is going to tell you what the size of that zero matrix is, okay? So if your first matrix A is a three by three, then your zero matrix is going to be a three by three, okay? It can take on any kind of size. It's just got a bunch of zeros and that's it. Okay, so if I wanted to solve an equation like this, this is like the multiplication. I knew they were going to do it. I just got ahead of myself. So if I'm trying to solve an equation like this, don't you just minus A on both sides, right? But we know that minusing A is also the same as adding a negative A. Is that true? So they wrote it like that. So they're going to add the negative A to that side, and they're going to add the negative A to this side. What happens is that the positive A and the negative A cancel each other out, don't they? And then here, I don't know what that's gonna be, but we'll figure it out when we know what A and B are. And then, so you just get X out by itself equal to this. This is normal, this we've done before. We didn't realize that all these things were happening behind the scenes, but we know that that's true, right? With matrices, it's the same thing, okay? So if I have this and I'm trying to solve for X, I would have to minus the A over, but you don't really ever subtract matrices. You add the negatives. Okay, so if I add the negative matrix on over here and I do the same thing over there, this will become the zero matrix. And we just talked about that if you have the zero matrix plus another matrix, it's gonna be the same matrix, right? And then for notation purposes, you can change that symbols into a minus. And so then doesn't this look the same, right? It's just in capital letters because we're talking about matrices now, okay? but it's just trying to explain to you that it's the same process, okay? This one is like, it's fun, but at the same time, it's frustrating <laughs> multiplication because it's really easy to like mess it up. And if you don't have it straight in your mind, you're going to mess it up, okay? They try their hardest to explain <laughs> how to do it, but it's just very, very, very difficult, okay? Um, this does not make sense to me. I just look at that and I'm like, huh? Does, do you, can you look at that and be like, what does that mean? Oh, that means this, right? No, me neither. <laughs> so I don't mess with that. All I do is this is the important part you need to know. If you have a matrix and another matrix and you're telling me you want to multiply them, they do not need to have the same size like adding and subtracting. Okay, adding and subtracting, you have to have the same size. You can multiply matrices that don't have the same size, but you can't just multiply any two matrices together of any sizes, okay? What's important is, is that you write the dimensions of A and you write dimensions of B. And if the number of columns in A matches the number of columns in rows in B, 
then that's when you can um, multiply them. And your result will actually be in this dimension by that dimension, okay? I think they have a better image of it on the other page. Yes, they do. That makes more sense to me. That's more visual, right? So if I'm going to try to do A times B, I'm gonna write down his dimensions and I'm gonna write down B's dimensions. These guys must be the same in order for me to actually multiply, okay? If they're not, then it's impossible to multiply them. And you just tell the computer that, okay? But when I do multiply them, I am gonna end up with this matrix by that matrix. So know that the answer just has M by P, okay? And again, they try to explain this with the matrices, but still doesn't make any sense to me. So I can try to explain it to you. What they're going to do is they're going to take the rows in this column, and I'm going to use my hands a lot on this because if I don't, I'm gonna lose you, okay? But what they're gonna do is they're gonna multiply all the people in this top row by all the people in that first column. And didn't I just take everybody in the top row and the first column? Once you multiply all those numbers together, you have to add them all up so that you just get one response for that one step, okay? So you're gonna take all these guys in this row, all the guys in that row, you're gonna add up all the results and you're gonna have one number. Where does that number go? Didn't you just take the first row and the first column? So it goes in the first row and the first column. So it would go right there, okay? And that's what this is trying to tell you. I know it's real, real tiny. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the letters. On the, the document, you can zoom in, right? It's saying if you have I and J, I is the row, J is the column. So that means you would need to take the row, the I row, and multiply it by the J column. And when you do all of those multiplications, you gotta add them all together. And then that result goes in this Ith row and that Jth column, okay? It's saying the same thing. I'm visual, I use my hands. So you will keep seeing me do this little, this thing, every single time, okay? So I will be doing that. I am trying <laughs> to explain it as best as I can. I tried to use colors over here, okay? So they're asking me to find this product and I'm trying to use my colors. Now, first thing I need to do is just make sure that it's even possible, right? What is the dimensions of this matrix? Three rows, two columns. And then what is the um, size of this one? Two rows and two columns. So these do match, but what that means is I'm gonna end up with the three by two right? It's like these kind of just wipe each other out and that's what I'm going to end up with, okay? So when I drew my box over here, I knew it had to have three rows and two columns, and so that's how I drew it, okay? And now it's just a matter of filling in all the boxes, and I tried my hardest to do it with color so that if my hands don't work, <laughs> at least you can see it in colors, okay? So this first box is in pencil, right? That's the first row and the first column, isn't it? So to get that answer, I have to take all the entries in this first row and all the entries in this first column, multiply them individually, and then add them, okay? So what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna show you down here at the bottom because they have it already all written out. But what they're doing, we don't need that part no more, is they're taking the one times the negative three right here, and then they're taking the three times the negative four, which they have right here. And when you do this computation, so this is the gray box. When you do that computation, you get positive three plus negative 12, which is where this negative nine came from. Okay. Now I'm gonna go over to the next spot. I'm gonna go over to this purple box right here. So what this is still the first row, isn't it? But I'm in the second column now, right? So I have to take the first row of this matrix times the second column. So the one, negative one and the two get multiplied together. And then the three and the one get multiplied together, okay? And then when I do that computation, 
this would be the purple box, I end up with this number in that purple box. Okay. I'm going to keep going and out doing it just because. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next color. Now I'm trying to get this number. That is now in the second row, right? But it's still in the first column. So I have to take this second row times the first column. So we're going to do the four times the negative three, and then the negative two times negative four. Okay. That's this computation here. And after they completed that computation, they got negative four. Okay. This one, I do suggest that you actually write down what you're doing. You may not need to write this, but I typically write down this. I'll do it for the next term. I'm going to do it for all of them. I'm going to look for the blue one. That's the second row and the second column. So I need the second row times the second column. What I do on paper is I do two times four, which is eight, plus negative two times one, which is negative two. So I do this on my paper. I don't really write down that. I write down this, and then I tell you that this is six, right? You see what I mean? Okay. So I don't really write all of that out, but I do write something just because, oh, that's the wrong color. Putting too much purple. Okay, next one is the green. I don't have my green color, but this is what row and what column? Third row, first column. So I got to take the third row, but the first column. So notice they're both in green, right? And so there I would get negative 15. And then here I would just get zero. And negative 15 plus zero is where this negative 15 came from. Finally, the last one, the yellow one. It's the bottom row times the right column, right? So bottom row times the right column, five times two is 10. And then zero times one is just zero. So I get the 10 down there, okay? So I hope the colors help it. <laughs> I'm trying to make it make sense. It is a little, a little complicated. Now, just like the addition uh, properties, there are multiplication properties. Notice there's no commutative property for multiplication, right? I told you they're not the same. If you multiply A and B and you do that, you cannot do it the other way around. Point in case, this problem right here. What happens if I tried to do B times A? What are the dimensions of B? This guy, two by two. And what are the dimensions of A? Three by two. Do these guys match? No, so that one's just flat out impossible to do. So like definitely not equivalent, right? One of them you can't even do. So that's why you don't see that commutative property over here, okay? It does not exist for matrices. But you can choose to apply the back two matrices together or the front two matrices together first and then multiply the third one in. Um, as long as you don't switch the order of them, you're okay. You can, again, I would never, I would never do this. That's a bunch of multiplying here, a bunch of multiplying there, and then I got to add it together, right? I would always choose this one. I'd rather add two matrices together and do the multiplication just one time, right? Same thing here. Um, I'd rather add the matrices together and then multiply it, okay? And then with the constants multipliers, you have to be careful I think you guys know this already because I've, I've explained it to you, but just to verify again, if you were multiplying things like that, I always tell you to multiply two of them first and then multiply the third one in later, right? This one doesn't get distributed to both. It just doesn't work that way, right? They all get multiplied. So you just do two at a time. It's the same thing here, but this is just a real number. So it really doesn't matter whether I multiply the A by the real number or if I multiply the B by the real number. The important thing is, is that you don't take this number and multiply it by both because those are not added or subtracted. There's a difference between this rule and that rule. There's a plus in the middle, isn't there? So I can distribute the number. There's no plus in the middle here, so you cannot. 
You can either just choose one or the other or just wait till after the fact, okay? Now, we can finally start talking about additive inverses or inverses, period. I told you the end game, right? End game is to be able to solve those equations, those matrix equations, but without having to do all that craziness. It's just more craziness. It's just different craziness. <laughs> this, we want to know how to find the inverse of matrix. Because if I do that, then I can just do some multiplication and then I've got the answer, okay? It sounds like it's so easy, right? But to find a matrix is not that easy. You're still gonna have to do row reduction, but it's just a different way of doing it, okay? So first thing is you need to know what an identity matrix is. We've actually been working with identity matrix. We just never called it that. When we were doing the row operations, weren't we trying to get it down to one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 and then whatever the numbers were here were my answers, right? This is called the identity matrix. And it's the same whether you have three rows and three columns or whether you just have two rows and two columns or if you had four, four by four. Right? It doesn't matter how big the matrix is. What's important is that an identity matrix will always have that diagonal of ones and everybody else will be zero, okay? That's an identity matrix. Now, if you multiply a matrix by the identity matrix, coincidentally, it stays the same matrix, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you multiply it on the left or you multiply it on the right, okay? Watch what happens when I do my fingers. I'm gonna try to do my fingers. When I take these three guys, I'm just gonna use two fingers because my fingers are fatter than these font. So these three guys are going to get multiplied by these three guys, right? Isn't it just going to wipe out the two and the five? And so you're just going to have that three right there, right? If I do the next guy, the next spot, um, this one times the first row, the one's going to stay the same, but that's going to be zero and that's going to be zero. So you just get the one. And if you keep doing the multiplication, you'll realize, don't these look exactly the same, right? So the multiplying by the identity matrix won't change anything. You'll just get the same matrix. Why are they telling me that? Because I told you over here that these two things would undo each other. And there's actually behind the scenes, a step in between. I told you that we did, um, there's something going on in here. So if you have this matrix, times the X matrix, and then you have the constant matrix. You can multiply by the inverse of A. And you do the same on the other side. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other, right? And what happens is that these two things become the identity matrix. And then the identity matrix times the X matrix is just gonna be the X matrix, okay? So I didn't write these two steps in there, did I? I just went from here to here, okay? Oops, I messed up, didn't I? I was supposed to write that down. But it is what is happening, okay? So that's the reason why they're even mentioning it here. The pages are so out of order. I don't even know where they go anymore. It's okay, I'll fix it later. So I told you, you can turn this into an A times an X equal to a, right? This is how it is done, okay? So you're already used to turning it into an augmented matrix where you had all the coefficients and then you had a line and then you had all the constants, right? You're used to doing that. All they did now was throw in the variables, okay? 
So whatever this first row was, that's what goes at the top. Whatever the next row variable was, that goes here. The third variable goes there, okay? So whatever your variables are in these columns, those are gonna become the variables in your rows, okay? And now it is in this matrix equation form. Okay, now, what do you want me to do? It's called the constant matrix, that matrix B. Here we go. So it says for the system of linear equations, write the system as a matrix equation. So what would be the A, the coefficient part? What would go here? One, negative two, one. In the next row? Mm -hmm. And in the last row? Two, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Now, what about the variable matrix? This part. X1, X2, and then finally X3, right? Now, what about the, they call it B, I call it C because it's just constants. But just the constants go in that last one, right? So the negative four, the four, and the two. And that's all they wanted me to do for part eight. So for part eight, that's it. That's what I'm gonna type in, okay? But now for part B, it wants me to solve this thing for X, okay? But I have to do it the old school way. I have to put A over here and then do the little dotted line. I always use a solid line. And they want me to solve it using the Gauss Jordan elimination. I'm not going to just because it takes forever, but I erased the paper where it did it for me. Hmm. It's not too bad though. I could probably do it real quick. Do you mind if I do it real quick? Or do I want to go slow like I did the other ones? You're like that wasn't slow either, miss. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna change this to zero. So negative two row one plus row three to give me a new row three. So I get negative two, four, negative two, eight. Zero, seven, zero, and 10. Why didn't I mess with the other rows? Mm -hmm, they already have a zero and the one, right? That one's already good too. So two, row two plus row one. If you catch me making a mistake, let me know. And then I'm also going to do negative seven row two plus row three. So zero, negative seven, negative 14, negative 28. So I get zero, zero, negative 14, and negative 18. So this is my new matrix. Zero, five, and four. Zero, one, two, four, and zero, zero, negative 14, negative 18. Now I'm gonna divide that by negative 14. Negative 18 times nine sevenths. Zero, zero, one, and then nine sevenths. Did I ever say you couldn't get fractions? No, right? You can have fractions as answers. I'm mentioning that because sometimes you get fractions in the matrix and sometimes you get fractions as your answers. It doesn't mean that you did anything wrong, okay? You just compute and that's it. Whatever it is, it is. 
Now I'm going to do negative two row three plus row two, and then I'm going to do negative five row three plus row one. So for this one, that will stay the same, that will stay the same, that will be a negative five. That I do not know what that would be. Negative five times nine sevenths, and then I'm going to add four. And then negative two, so zero, zero, one, negative two, and then negative two times nine, oops, seven, plus this four. I get 10 over seven and nine over seven. So then we get our answers. We get X equals this fraction, y equals this fraction and then z equals this fraction so they all happen to be sevens it doesn't matter okay that's what it is let me go check and see if i'm right so negative 17 over 7 minus 2 times um 10 over 7 and i used the wrong variables didn't i were my variables X, Y, and Z? <laughs> they were not. So I checked it in the first one. I plugged in the X, the first um, response here, and then the second one, and then the third one, and I got the negative four like it says I'm going to get, right? I could check them in all of them. You're supposed to. Um, 10 over 7, my second solution plus two times my third solution, which was nine sevenths. And I get positive four. And then finally, two times the first solution, plus three times the second solution, and then minus two times the third solution. And it should come out to two. Oops, see that one did not come out right. I type in the right, negative 7, 10, 2, 3, negative 2, can't see, minus 2 times 9, 7. So I did do something wrong. Ding, 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 ding. Let's go. Negative 2, row 1, plus row 3. So negative 2, 4, 2. See what I mean by it's important for you to write your steps right here? So that way, when you go back, you can check it. I got 10. Okay, that's fine. And I copied these down correctly. Okay, good. Then I did 2, 2 plus row 1. So 0, 2, 4, 8, 5, 0, 1. So that's correct. Then I did negative 7 times row two, so zero, negative 28, right? Seven times four is negative 28, and then zero, seven, 10, zero, negative 14, negative 28 plus 10 is negative 18, so that's correct. Um, then what did I do? It's probably these when I didn't write down my steps. That's why I always try to write them down. I just got lazy because I was running out of paper. So negative two row, oh, I divided, yes. Then negative two times row two. So zero, 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 and then negative two times nine sevenths plus four. I got 10 sevenths. And then negative five. So negative five times sevenths plus this four. I got negative 17 sevenths. What did I do wrong then? Hmm, I don't know why this one's not checking out. That is very strange. I'll come back to this one. I don't want to waste too much time on it. I'm going to put a star 
And when I get back to my office, I will try to figure out what happened, why it's not checking out, because it should check out, okay? So once I figure out what's not checking out, I'm not gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna leave this like it is. I'm just gonna add another sheet of paper that is explaining whatever happened, okay? Um, but I don't wanna waste too much time on that. But you know the process on how to solve these things this old way, okay? So let's go ahead and get to this practice section part. Um, remember, it's the whole section. So they're going to be talking about the adding, the subtracting, the multiplying, and then rewriting those matrices, okay? So I think for now, let's just add, subtract, and multiply. So are A and B the same size in this problem number one? They are, and they must be in order to do any of those add and subtract things, okay? So if I add them together, what am I gonna get? Mm -hmm. What do I get for the first entry? One. What do I get for the second entry? Negative two. So you're doing them individually, right? And then what about the bottom one? Zero. And then this last one? Eight. Good. Now what about A minus B? You're basically adding the opposite, right? So it's two plus a positive one, which is what? Three. And then negative one plus a positive one, zero. Negative one plus a negative one, negative two. And then one plus a negative seven, negative six, okay? Now, what about two A? How do we do that? Everybody in A times two. So it'll become four, negative two, negative two, and two, okay? This one's a little bit harder. You might have to do it in two steps. You can't just do it in one. So two A minus five B. What I like to do first is I like to do the two A, five B first, and then I can just minus them, right? So the two A, I actually already did it, didn't I? And then the 5B, I'm not, notice the minus is here. So don't multiply by a negative five, okay? You can also do that if you choose to. You can also do 2A plus negative 5B. But then what would that symbol be? A plus sign, okay? And so then I'm gonna multiply all of these guys by a negative five. So that turns into positive, that turns into positive five, that turns into negative five, and then this turns into negative 35, okay? And when I finally get to add them together, four and five is nine, negative two and five is three, negative two and negative five is negative seven, and then two plus this is negative 33, okay? So it is helpful to do it this way, just so that you don't have to worry about changing the signs later, right? They're already changed when you multiply by that negative five. Okay. Um, now the next one says to do A and B. And it says, state the dimensions of the result. So what are the dimensions of A? Three rows, two columns. What are the dimensions of B? Two by two. So we can do it, right? And when we do that, we're gonna end up with a three by two. So these wipe out and you end up with three by two. Now let's go do it, if that's the hard part. It's three rows, so it probably needs to be a little bit longer. I don't know how much space I'm gonna need. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this row times this column. So negative one times that guy is negative two. Eight times zero is just zero. Now the next one. This row times the first column. That gives me negative six plus zero. Now this row times that column. I get zero plus zero. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now we're going to move on to the second column. So the eight I'm sorry, 
not the eight. This top row times the second column. So negative one times three is negative three and eight times six is 48, right? Is that right? Yeah, okay, good. Now second row times the second column. So I get negative nine and 36. Then the last row times the second column. I get zero plus 18. So my answer, I could probably fit the answer there. My answer is gonna be negative two, 45, negative six, 27, zero and 18. Negative nine, 26, yes, 27. Oops, you can't see me. So that's going to be the answer there, okay? But you have to do it, don't go fast. It, you can make a mistake. I almost did when I was doing it, okay? So be very, very careful. But this one, what are the dimensions of A? Three by two, good. And then what about this one? Three by three. So do these match? No, so this one is impossible. Okay, that's all you write in the computer. You do not try to do it. You can't, because what happens when you try to do this times this column? The seven doesn't have nobody to multiply by, right? So that's why you can't do those. Okay, so we did get through this one. We're not gonna get through all of 10.3 because I told you the end game, right? End game was to figure out what the heck an inverse is. How do you find an inverse? It's exactly what 10.3 is about, but I highly doubt that we're gonna get to go through the whole thing, okay? Just because I know that row reduction takes forever, right? We were doing row reduction when we were solving that first equation that we solved today, first system. This is row reduction. It takes forever, right? When you're finding an inverse, you have to do row reduction, okay? So it's the same sort of thing, but they just want us to do it this way. So they talked about this already. I already mentioned that to you on the other page. I already mentioned this to you. Now here's how you verify whether two things are inverses. If two things are in fact inverses, then when you multiply them together, you should get the identity matrix, the diagonal of ones with a bunch of zeros, okay? Also, it shouldn't matter which way you multiply it, they should both give you the identity matrix, okay? You have to check both because if you check one, and it gives you the identity matrix, it is possible that when you switch them, it won't give you the identity matrix. And then they're not inverses, okay? So you do have to check both multiplications, okay? Just to make sure that it's an inverse. So the first thing they did here was to take A times B. They're the exact same size. So does it matter whether I'm doing A times B or whether I'm doing B times A? They're both, the inner ones match for both of them, don't they? And regardless, my result's gonna be a two by two either way, okay? Um, there's an important thing you need to know is that you can only take the inverse of what is called a square matrix. We talked about what a square matrix is, right? It's when the number of rows and the number of columns is exactly the same, okay? So these are square matrices, right? Don't they have two rows and two columns, okay? Those are the only kinds of guys that have an inverse. If you're a three by two or two by three, you're not gonna have an inverse, okay? So they'll never ask you to do it if the dimensions don't match and they're not square. So first one, we're gonna do top row times first column. So they get negative one and then they get two. Top row times the second column, they get positive two and negative two. Bottom row times the first column, they get negative one and positive one. And then bottom row times the second column, they get positive two and negative one. And then when they do all these computations, they get this. Is this the identity matrix? Does it have a diagonal of ones and everybody else is zero? It is the identity matrix. But now they have to go check the other way around, okay? So now they put the B in the front and the A in the back, 
And when we do the same computation, the numbers might look different or they might look the same. But when I do all of the math, I do end up with the same matrix, don't I? Okay, so they are all, both of them are equal to the identity. So it does have a matrix. Not all matrices have, not all square matrices have inverses though. If they do, it's called non-singular. If it does not have an inverse, it's called singular, okay? So if it has a matrix, it's called invertible or non-singular. But if it doesn't have an inverse, it's called a, it's called singular, okay? And of course, we already know that non-square matrices don't have inverses, period, right? They don't ever have inverses. Dun, 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 dun. And it's just explaining you why, right? Because if I'm gonna have to multiply them both ways, the only way both of them are gonna work out is if all the dimensions are the same, right? So all the numbers have to match. Um, now, I think I, I threw away some papers because there were some papers in between in your packet. It took like four pages to say this one sentence. So, <laughs> so I just threw out the four pages and I wrote the damn sentence down, right? Um, but in order for you to find an inverse, essentially what you do is you take the matrix that you're given and then you write that little bar like we've been doing in our row reductions, right? And then you put the identity matrix on the other side. And then your goal, just like in the regular row reduction, your goal was to make the left side look like an identity matrix. I just never called it that, okay? But your goal was to get those ones and then the zeros, right? You're doing the same thing. And when you're finished, this side will look like the identity matrix, and then that side will be the actual inverse, okay? And so this is the process of how you find an inverse. Now, this process, oh, it's all my scratching, <laughs> all that stuff up. Um, that process of finding an inverse works for any square matrix, any square matrix, you can do that process. However, um, there is a shorter process for the little tiny ones, the two by twos, okay? So if you do have a two by two matrix, there is a second way to do it. And we'll talk about that probably not today because I'll probably run out of time. But next class, we'll definitely talk about the little shortcut to do the tiny ones, but it only works on the little tiny ones, okay? So we're gonna just, with the tiny one, we wanna start you know, easing ourselves into finding these inverses, okay? So they're gonna start with the little one and they say, find the inverse of this matrix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick that matrix, we're gonna put the bar, and then we're gonna put the identity matrix of the same size on the other side, okay? And then your goal is to turn this into the identity matrix. We're lucky there's already a one right there, right? So we just need to make this guy a zero. So I'm just gonna add row one to row two to get that zero. So those guys make zero, these guys make one, those guys make one, these guys make one, right? Then now I need to turn, that's already a one, so fantastic. We need to get this guy to turn to a zero. So they need a negative four times row two plus that row one. So this would become zero, negative four, negative four, negative four, and then row one would go underneath and then when I combine, you can see where they're getting these values from, right? Now the left side does look like the inverse, doesn't it? I mean, the identity, right? So what this means is that the inverse of A is negative three, negative four, one, and one, okay? Now, it's coincidence that they're the same numbers but like in different places and different signs and all of that, right? There's no pattern to it. So don't try to figure that out, okay? It'll be one pattern on one problem and a whole nother pattern on another problem. And then there'll be another problem that then you have a pattern, okay? So don't try to <laughs> figure out what's going on there, okay? Now, let's see. What, this is just saying the same thing, right? You started off with this, but then you got this. So this is the inverse, okay? Dun, dun, dun. And then there's that same sentence with this, all oh, these pages. I don't know why they do that, but okay. Um, oh, I guess I am gonna have time to do it. Ha ha. 
So anytime you're doing a matrix three by three or four by four or five by five, which we don't do in this class, but you will do them in your engineering class. You'll get some like 10 by 10, I swear. They're huge, <laughs> but it is what it is. So but we don't get any of those, so we're okay. Um, but the two by two, there is another formula. This is the formula. It's right here. That's the formula. It will be given on your test. You don't have to memorize it. Okay. But um, they haven't really talked to us really about what a determinant is. So that's not actually going to get talked about until we get to 10.4. 10.4 is about the determinant. But they're just letting you know. I don't know why this is in this section. This is, this is backwards to me. Normally, if I'm going to use the determinant, we'll talk about the determinant first and then use it, right? Whatever. <laughs> they give you the formula, okay? Later on, we'll learn that this is the determinant, okay? And so later on, you might see the same formula, but it'll have one over D, and then it'll have these letters, okay? And so later, it'll have a different name. But this determinant, this is the same thing. Okay, how do we use this formula? Here's a problem, an example. Oh, they give me examples over here. Okay, yes. They're taking like five pages to do this stupid example. Okay, so here's the problem. I'm gonna write number um, A, D minus B, C, and then was D negative B, negative c a so that's the formula that is a d not an a so if i want to do this problem here and i want to find the matrix first thing is remember this is a b c and d right you need to know who everybody is once you know who everybody is you're going to do a times d so three times two is right here and then it has a minus sign so you need to put that minus sign and then you need to do B times C. So B times C, and that's these guys here, okay? So that actually is going to be a six minus a two, which is where they got four from. So now I know that when I go to do the formula here, this number is a four, right? I just computed that number and it's a four, but I have to multiply it by this matrix. So D, which was a two, stays the same. Then negative B goes here. So notice that the negative one changed to a positive one. C stays the same, but it changes sign. So that becomes a positive two. And then A now goes down here. So that three is now down here. So do you see what's happening? It's like these two guys swap spots and then these two guys swap signs, right? So when you're going from here to here, once you find that determinant, these two guys are going to switch spots and those two guys are going to switch signs and that's exactly what happened right the two and the three are now located different and the one and the two are now different sign okay and then if you just multiply everybody by a one fourth you end up with the answer which looks like this so one fourth times two is actually one half one fourth times one is one fourth one fourth times two is one half again, and one fourth times three is three fourths, okay? Now, the second example though, when you go to do example B, I have to figure out that determinant thing first, right? When you try to do the AD minus the BC for B, AD is a six, but then BC is actually another six, isn't it? And I get zero. If you do the determinant and you get zero, then B is not invertible. B is singular, okay? Because I'm supposed to put one over that number, aren't I? And can you put one over zero? It's undefined, right? So that's why we don't have an inverse if that number turns out to be zero. You can't multiply by an undefined number, okay? I think I'm going to stop here. I don't want to keep going. I don't have a whole bunch left, but I do want to wait on it. 
let that whole inverse stuff marinate <laughs> for just a little bit. When we come back over the weekend, um, we will talk about solving the equations using the inverses, okay? For now, for this weekend, just practice doing the row reduction. That's gonna be your biggest thing to overcome is the row reduction, okay? You guys have a good weekend. If you do get stuck on problems, make sure you text me, let me know, and I can help you through them, okay?